Hello everyone, my name is River and welcome to the Nimiton. Today I had a strange inclination to talk about something that I feel like goes underrepresented in the scope of occultism. And this is the aspects of normal morality, things that are strikingly valuable, but are typically overlooked. We become obsessed with ritual, metaphysics, uh, what have you. So I, I uh, wanted to give a little brief talk. Um, for those of you who know, there's a particular subject matter called the 50 Gates of Understanding. It comes from a Hebrew Kabbalah. Uh, the Gates of Understanding are discussed also in Hermetic Kabbalah, but they're primarily based off of the Jewish tradition. I've shared at once um, the chart of all the Sephirothic bases and each uh, inclination that's associated with it. It's actually like an action, right? I, I think I did a little video one time called 50 Gates of Understanding where I talked about this a little bit. The thing is, one of the most valuable aspects of the 50 Gates that I think many people did not notice is that often in terms of speech and the formality of speech, it deals with truthfulness. Now, that's not so uh, grand, <laughs> or striking, or interesting. But I wanted to take the time to discuss why I find it so valuable, what it is about the idea of these truthfulness things that are uh, so prevalent to me. And I'll give you some examples of why it might be valuable to you as well. When it comes to spiritual elevation in Judaic Kabbalah, and we talk about truthfulness, often what's really being sought after is simply the lack of lie, right? So truth, truth is preeminent. It exists as it is. Lies are created, right? So think of, take, take your time to kind of think about that. Like, like truth simply is. Everything is true. Only we as human beings have the capacity, I mean any creature, any active creature can essentially uh, fake you out. It can lie, it can deceive. Um, and one of the interesting things about this is in the metaphysical spaces we also understand that truthfulness is also preeminent, right? There is no confusion, right? For example, Samael, right, Hasatan, as he's known as, uh, the Satan, the adversary, is never removed from heaven in the Judaic tradition, right? Uh, those are actually two angels called Aza and Azael. But they're never, uh, never is the devil who uh, Christianity seems to hate so greatly ever removed from heaven. Why is that? It is because he is true to his nature. And I say he for convenience. I mean, these are metaphysical entities. They really deserve no uh, stratification. Is that the right word? Stratification. I forget. I'm going to look it up. I know we're doing an impromptu video. This is probably kind of weird, but yeah. The arrangement or classification of something into different groups. Yeah, okay. Stratification was moderately accurate. Not the most accurate. Uh, but when dealing with these factors in everyday life, something we can learn is that there is no guilt, right? Many, many a deceiver learns to not feel guilt, but there's something special about not needing to feel guilt at all, or not having to worry about it at all, not being disconnected from reality. And one of the major factors to doing that is truthfulness. Um, it's not saying that you need to go out of your way to be a goody two-shoe, but find those factors, those spaces in which we have little white lies and remove them. You know, uh, it's amazing what happens in your life when you're bluntly honest, so to say, <laughs> which is hilarious because, you know, people, it, it, you'll, you'll get some backlash, right? You'll get some people, I, I can't believe you would say such a thing type of scenario. Not, not that it's rude necessarily, but just because you were so blunt. And at the same time, they cannot help but respect you because it's in our nature. 
it's in our instinctive nature to desire to know things and to not be lied to right to we 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 love okay i guess i'll put it like this there's two types of people on this planet there's people who like pretty little lies and people who don't and those who don't are the ones who will show up when you need them and those who do tend to be very unreliable uh the ones who like pretty little lies (laughs) tend to be unreliable it's it's a funny scenario um the thing is is in terms of spiritual elevation, particularly through the 50 gates of wisdom, or 50 gates of understanding, excuse me. Gates of wisdom is a whole other subject matter, and I really, really don't know if we'll ever get that far. Uh, But in consideration of the 50 gates of understanding, we must understand that uh, truthfulness is a major factor in its presentation and what it is that it means to be valued in the spiritual form. Why does this matter, right? Occultly, in terms of esotericism, why does this matter? If you want to be able to commune with spiritual entities, right? Now, I get it. There's a lot of TikTokers out there who talk about talking with different deities and shit. I simply don't believe it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't believe you. You know, like these random TikTokers who talk to gods and these gods deal with them. I, I don't. I don't buy it. I'm sorry. You're 16, 17, maybe 20. And you're uh, a random jackass. I don't I don't think they give a crap about you at all. What would you do? Bring some pretty plants and flowers? You know? Uh, threw a couple rocks up on a table? No. No. Get out of here. You know? I, I don't believe in a, a large variety of general tradcraft. I, I think it's uh, almost laughable. Um, I don't know how I got on that tangent. I guess I was just throwing out my opinions and thoughts. Uh, but yeah, to, to return, in the gates of understanding, it's understandable that to actually deal and integrate yourself and relate to particular entities, you're going to need to uh, fit their bill. And um, there's a long mythos in Kabbalistic tradition, that uh, angels and the like kind of don't like us very much. (laughs) You know, uh, like, I I mean that jokingly, but I also mean that seriously. They kind of, they kind of don't like us, you know. Um, We smell bad. They say we reek of onions. That's one of the phrasings that we reek of onions. Um, It's one of the best ways to put it, at least. And, uh, they don't like to deal with us. You know, we have, you know, we have this capacity to be, uh, conniving and by that very merit, uh, the spirit descends, you know, uh, we didn't end up in Malkuth just because we were intended to be here. We ended up here by the nature of our being, which doesn't make this wrong. It's not bad to be like a little white liar, so to say white lies implying, uh, simple lies, right? For those who don't understand. Or think that I'm making some association to, like, uh, I don't know, race or something. Uh, But I do hope that with some of those basic understandings that you will uh, be able to get further into Kabbalistic integrations, spiritual activity. And of course, I don't demand Kabbalah from anyone. I know many, many a variety of, of occultists show up to my channel and listen to my little random talks and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, man, uh, I think I'm just going to go on a tangent again. Yeah, that's it's crap, dude. Uh, no, no, these kids are not talking to Loki. But y- you know what's funny? Like Loki, Loki worships skyrocketed because of the Marvel movies. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't, I don't judge anyone. I let them do what they want to do, but like, come on, man, they're 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 kids. They're not, they're not talking to Loki. They're not having coffee with deities in the morning. It's trash. Uh, and these various deities, uh, really, really don't don't give a shit about people at all. You know, like I only, well, what I think people don't understand is so a lot of it comes from the Greek era. Right, so when we read the epic poetry 
of like Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, we uh, get this inclination or belief that gods are just all over the place. Now, I know many of you have probably looked at the Iliad at some point, but have not read the full piece. Uh, to understand how valuable deities were in the Greek era, just read the first line. The very first line of the Iliad talks about deities, right? And the presence of deities on the battlefield. Um, so they were. They were very integral to their culture and beliefs and style. However, um, this was a cultural phenomenon. They did not literally, in the moment, believe that gods were like, they're there. It was just part of of their literary practices and also some of their spiritual beliefs is that they were at least remotely present but they didn't like they didn't just hang around all the time you know the the personification of deity in terms of greek structure was really just a way to humanize them it's a it's a, a cultural thing it doesn't mean that they're literally there and for some reason the great majority of these like young people today are wishing praying even they may not be christian right or jewish or abrahamic to be specific but they're they're basically praying to have uh, a higher force in their lives why is that why is it that the human condition is one in which we beg to have something to rely on or something to blame Uh, and it comes from uh, our mental structure Our mental structure is um, a scared one. We are, surprisingly, a rather docile creature. Uh, And not at the same time. We have have the function, the brain power, and the capacity to to turn from um, apex predators and docile creatures. We can be in both, both extremes. We're kind of gifted in that way. But one of the things is uh, when it comes to the gates of understanding about truthfulness is that we must remain true to who we are. Um, However, truthfulness will create a sense of humility over time. And humility will slowly disconnect you uh, from the world in a variety of ways. The reason this is big, the reason this is important, I should say, at least to you, the viewer, is that the, the proclamation And usage of humility and peaceability, particularly, is going to follow in to your ability to associate yourselves with the various elemental spirits. I know, right? You probably weren't expecting that. I've never talked about elemental spirits on this channel before, and I don't plan to again. I might. But um, if you really, really want to get into conjurations, and you're possibly feeling like you're wasting your time or things aren't working out the way you wanted them to. Or maybe you haven't had a good evocation in your entire life. Many people will never have a solid evocation. Um, You might have a variety of invocations. Some lighter, maybe a couple big ones. You really want to like do something. You want to see something. Make some things happen that can scare people. Uh, You have to find that that comfy balance, that peaceability within you. And all of that stems, at least as far as my perspective goes, from the truthfulness of one's nature. Huh. All right. Well, look, thanks for coming to my talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, there's the alarm. (laughs) All right. Bye, guys.